Look at the lines, pay attention, think about it, forget about it, go to sleep. Each week on this video, we'll give you Chris List's three best bets against the spread. Chris, you're on an unbelievable streak with your best bets. Yeah, so I'm 9-0 and on best bets, 1-512 in through dumb luck. And I wrote about this in East Coast Offense today in the column. I said, I can do the odds and the math, but you know what? I don't want to know about it because that's actually already losing. Because you're just going to be like, I don't want to give away Squid Game, but you know, the mathematician. But the point is, you're just going to be like, oh, this isn't going to happen. It's never going to happen. But that's not the way to think of it because that's really comparing it to coin flips. Um, and coin flips are like a very in, inaccurate, inapt model for handicapping against the spread. Yeah, it's 50-50. The market's hard to beat. But no, it's not really 50-50. Uh, these games are on average 50-50 in the aggregate. But really specifically each one, there may be a little edge that you have, a little angle that, um, that you're seeing that the market isn't seeing because the market prices things generally, not specifically to this game. Sounds like you've been handicapping for well over 20 years. And when I say handicapping, yep. you've been guessing the lines and, and recording your record against the spread. And it sounds like uh, in certain years, you're more model-based, and in other years, you're more gut-feel-based. I mean, you've watched enough football over the years to understand that. And how do you determine if you're going to be more spreadsheet-based, I'm air-quoting, or if you're going to be more gut and feel? Like so I've never really been model-based. Um, I've looked at Rufus Peabody's uh, numbers a bunch, his model, but I've never really had my own model, and I've never been strict to the numbers. I mean, sometimes I used to look at yards per play and net yards per play and things. But I just, I think like that's baked in. Not all that kind of stuff is just routine baked in. Rufus has found a couple of things that are not totally baked in. Um, and then I started handicapping for a while, like, oh, I'm going to fade the public. Like, the, look, the book wants you to take this. They're giving you the hook. They, and that was a little shaky. You end up taking a lot of crappy teams and really bad teams don't cover that often. I, I don't, I, I think that was also kind of a, another sort of tool that I was using when I got away from what I knew actually worked when I started, which was trust your process. Trust look at the lines pay attention think about it forget about it go to sleep do it again forget about it and i got away from that i got caught up in that probability thing like oh there's no way to beat those spread it's 50 50. where's my edge there's no edge it's public as hell everybody has all the information is basically baked in your only edge is going to be able to find something that feels off because you've noticed something that makes a lot of sense there that you have to try to find an observational edge where all of the mathematical edges are baked in. I like that. So let's take a look at three games. The first one that I thought was interesting was Miami Dolphins are home. They're getting seven and a half. It's funny. I've used Miami two out of the last three weeks, I think, as best bets. And they came through. I mean, not by a mile, but by enough. And I like them here. I mean, seven and a half is too much. The Ravens, their defense is not good. Miami is two and seven, but they're really more like a you know, a three and six, four and five level team, especially if Tua plays, they're not good, but they're not just absolutely horrible. Um, and I think it's a huge line on the road on a short week for the Ravens who just had an overtime game. Um, I like Miami here quite a bit. I might use them as my best bet. I, I'll decide tomorrow. Second game that I wanted to take a look at was the Colts are 10 and a half point favorites at home against the Jaguars coming off their big win. I know it's the NFL and any team can beat any team, but are the Jaguars starting to get a little momentum? Who do you like in this game? I mean, the Jaguars played well last week defensively, and, and you can't take that away from them. I like the Colts. I think that uh, the Colts are a bully team. I don't know how they let the Jets back into it. They almost covered. That was a nightmare, but they did hold off on that interception. But um, I just think the Colts uh, with Jonathan Taylor are, are the type of team that they get a lead and they can grind you down. And if Carson Wentz doesn't start freestyling it and throw uh, senseless interceptions, um, the, the Colts can run away with it. The last game is going to be two quarterbacks that were out last week coming back this week. Green Bay's home, giving three and a half to Seattle. Assuming both quarterbacks are back, who do you like? I like the Seahawks, and I think Green Bay is a really good team. I thought I think their defense is much better than in years past, and um, I think Rodgers is going to come back with a vengeance. I mean, he was just so vilified in the media for the whole uh, radio stint that he did. People are just merciless to him, you know, like he's some horrible person. Um, and I think he's going to be extremely focused for this game. So I think the Packers are good and their quarterback's gonna be back and he's gonna play well. But Russell Wilson is one of the best quarterbacks of all time, just like Aaron Rodgers is. He's coming back. The Seahawks are desperate. They need to win this game. I don't know if they will in Green Bay. It's a very hard place to get a win, but I think they're gonna show up too. So I kind of feel like the three and a half is enough. I feel like this is gonna be like almost a 50-50 game that either team can win. Uh, give me uh, give me the Seahawks. I think it's a really interesting game because of the quarterback situation. Yeah, I'll make them my third bet. 
see Chris Liss's column, Beating the Book, you can click the link in the video description below. And if you want to see all of Rotowire's fantasy content for free for 10 days, go to rotowire.com forward slash try.